Hey, Parkside Youth. Hey, we, we miss you guys so much. Uh, me and Thomas talk about you guys probably every single day, um, being here stuck at the house together. Uh, we just want you guys to know that we're still uh, here. If you guys need anything, we're here. But hey, today I want to talk about a really powerful story um, coming from Jesus just talking to us, having a conversation with us um, about worrying. Um, so a lot of you guys know from my testimony in the past that uh, my son Grayson, he was in the NICU for um, 30 days um, when he was born. He was very, very sick. Um, that sickness led up to uh, him not being able, him being deaf, him not being able to hear, him having a lot of uh, internal problems. And even on the outside of that, not just him, but it affected me and his mother Ashton quite a bit. Um, so one night, me and Ashton were sitting in the NICU, um, and we just we just start praying. Me and her weren't in the best mindset at that time either, um, just because of how stressful the situation is. Um, a lot like how stressful the world is right now with all of this stuff we have going on. So one night, we just sit down and we start praying and praying and praying, and uh, God just talks to both me and Ashton, and he says, hey, why are you guys worrying? You know I have this. You know that I have everything that's going on. You know your son's going to be okay because I am with him. He didn't say he was with us. He said he was with our son, Grayson, and kind of gave us a sigh of relief um, because we knew that it was in God's hands. There was nothing we could do. There was nothing the doctors could do. It was solely in God's hand. The next morning, me and Ashton, we walk into uh, the NICU, which is where he was staying at the time. We were only able to see him for about three hours at a time <clears throat> a day because of everything that he had going on because of how sick he was. We walk in the next day and just about every medical issue that he had had was resolved. Um, an insanely incredible testimony that he'll be able to share later on in life, but it's one that I, I personally like to use a lot because it teaches how, how God tells us that we don't need to worry because a lot of the things that he has for us in life, we, not, we might not expect, but he's got it in his hands and we shouldn't worry about it. So hey, today I just want to jump into this passage once again about God telling us not to worry. So hey, if you have your Bibles with you, I want you guys to turn to Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to go over verses 25 through 34. So hey, like Thomas said last week, hit that pause button while you find it in there, and uh, we can go ahead and get rolling. So hit it. Alright, here we go. So verse 25, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, or what you will wear. It is not life, is not... Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? What is he trying to tell us here? Do not worry. How are we not supposed to worry about what we eat? How are we not supposed to worry about what we wear? We worry about things all the time. But in that very first verse, it's a command from God. Hey, do not worry. Do not worry about what you're going to eat. Do not worry about what you're going to wear. Just solely do not worry. Hey, and then in verse 26, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. You are not much more than are you not much more than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Jesus tells us here tells us here about a story about a bird. They don't have to do anything to get their food. Nothing that Jesus there is nothing that Jesus doesn't provide for them even if they don't work for it. So even if they're not working for their food, they're not planting the seeds, they're not reaping the seeds after they have grown, Jesus still provides for them. Then he asks us, are we not more valuable than they are? Jesus says that we are more the most valuable things that he ever created. Can you even add an hour to your life by worrying? No, you can't. There's no point in worrying. If, we, if me and Ashton would have sat in the NICU and sat there and worried and worried and worried after we prayed that night, there would have been no point whatsoever. Um, after that prayer that we had that night, when we got in there the next day, all we did, we thanked God, we praised Him for everything He had done for us and done for our son. So that just shows you right there. If you just sit down, stop worrying, talk to God, let Him know what is going on, Jesus will provide for you. Hey you guys, moving on to verse 28. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. 
If that is how God clothes the, clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, he will not much more clothe you, you, you of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. <clears throat> he says to you, not, do you not see what's all around you? Look at the flowers, they look better than King Solomon. What King Solomon, he was the richest man at the time, in that time period, and people would just travel around just to go see him, just to see all of his glory and everything he had going on for him. They would come look at his stacks of gold and stuff like that. So stop worrying about what you're wearing. Stop worrying about what you eat. Stop worrying about this, that, and the other. A lot of us focus on our looks and how we eat and this, that, and the other. Hey, stop worrying about that. God's got you. Even, dur even during everything that we have going on right now with the coronavirus, there's not, a, and there's not even a single roll of toilet paper on the shelves. But you haven't wiped your butt with your hand yet, have you? No, no, no. So we should probably be thankful for that. We have a lot of things going on for us. And this right here is just telling us that, hey, God will provide for us. So, hey, moving on. Verse 33 through 34. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things will be given to you as well therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself each day has enough trouble of its own hey this is right here is where god tells us what life is really about seek his kingdom and his righteousness your clothes your food and everything else will be taken care of by god Hey, if that's not powerful enough, I, I don't know what it is. Just tells you, hey, don't worry. Seek God, seek his kingdom, and do all things that you can to be with him. We could go as far as even saying that includes loneliness, anxiety, depression, and really anything else you could think of. Hey, I know a lot of us in this time, we're lonely. We got a lot of stuff going on in our head. Like me, I have a lot of time to just sit and think, um, but also not a lot of time at the same time. We're all on the same page here. We just need to really grab hold of God, make sure we're praying, make sure we're getting into His Word, and make sure we're having our God time with Him. Make sure we're understanding and sharing with people that we hold close and dear to us. Um, that way they can get the same amount of wisdom and knowledge that uh, you are. Um, <coughs> Then he goes on to say, do not worry about tomorrow because today has enough trouble of itself. Everybody knows the verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let him be your strength in everything you do. That's what this is kind of saying. Hey, don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. Let God be your strength in everything that's going on in the world and everything that you're doing. That's what me and Ashton did. Hey, when we knew nothing else to do when Grayson was in the hospital, when we knew the doctors came and told us that he might not live another day, hey, that's what we did. We leaned on God. We used his strength in us to be able to stand strong for our son that, you know, might not make it. Thank the Lord he did. Um, but that's what we were prepared for. But hey, guys, in this time that we're going through right now, hey, I want to challenge you guys to just sit down, relax, breathe, go through everything that you're going through, and lean on God through it all. So with all this extra time we have, get into his work. I promise he will show you his promises and show you everything that he has in store for you. So hey Parkside, we love you guys and we miss you guys incredibly. We just want to let you know that, hey, these past Friday, this past Friday night that we had was phenomenal, and we can't wait till this coming up Friday night. We love you guys. We're, we're constantly praying for you. Hope you guys have a great week.